I want to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Being a mom is one of the most rewarding and challenging experiences in life. As a mom myself, I've learned a lot of different things along the way, as I'm sure you have as well. In today's episode, I want to share 10 things that I've learned since becoming a mom. From the importance of forgetting fashion, to knowing we are not going to please everyone. Today's insights are sure to resonate with every single mom out there. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join me as we celebrate Mother's Day by reflecting on some of the lessons that make us better moms. Hi, I'm Jenna Dix, and I'm always rambling. Just ask my husband. I have a great family and a pretty cool life, but I'm a recovered alcoholic. That's hard to say, but my goal is to inspire and educate to help others hopefully find life beyond an addiction. I'm all things, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Getting healthy, momming, and politics. Get offended easily? You better stop listening. There is no point in wasting that Botox by stressing yourself out listening to a podcast. Welcome to Ramblings of an Addict with Jenna Dix. Today's episode brought to you by products and services that I'm thoroughly addicted to. Are you tired of the same old meals and want to try something new in the kitchen? Look no further than Bridget Stockwell, an independent pampered chef consultant. With Bridget's help, you can upgrade your kitchen tools, discover delicious new recipes, and learn cooking techniques to make mealtime easier and more enjoyable for you and your family. Whether you're a busy mom, a cooking enthusiast, or a brand new person heading into the kitchen, Bridget can help you create healthy and delicious meals that your family will love. Contact Bridget Stockwell today to get started on your culinary journey. Her details are in the show notes. Happy cooking! Hey, 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 I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you are spending some time with me on Mother's Day, I want to wish you an incredible, peace-filled, happy Mother's Day. If you are listening after Mother's Day, I hope you had a wonderful day. And here's the deal. If the day didn't go as you'd planned, please, 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 you have permission. Take some time this week. We all freaking deserve it. I mean, I had a couple moments on Mother's Day today, like, because it's later in the day now. I will be transparent. There were a couple days I was like, now I know why there's some moms out there that are like, all I want is to be alone and be sent to the spa or to go get a pedicure. (laughs) There were definitely a few moments today that I was like, what, why am I spending this day with this craziness? But truth be told, obviously, I love being a mom. I love my girls so much. So if you um, have been following along with the podcast, you know, it's crazy to think we're already almost 30 episodes in. So for some people now getting to this point, if you're just popping in, trying to go back and listen to all those episodes, I mean, that's kind of a lot to have to catch up on. So if you are not fully in the know of what my family looks like, so I do have a 15-year-old bonus daughter, Haley, bonus daughter. I don't call it call her stepdaughter. My mom actually, I, I don't remember if it was an article or what, but right before Mike and I got married, she found this resource of some sort and gave it to me. And it was talking about calling your stepkids, your bonus kids. And I loved that idea. I absolutely loved it. So since marriage, I have called Haley my bonus daughter. Um, and then I have my own daughter, McKenna, who is three and a half. So we have a little bit of an age gap there, but that's totally okay. Uh, Mike and I have been together seven and a half years now at this point. Met Haley at about this point, actually, that time. So I've known Haley now for about seven years. She's been in my life for seven years. Um, So 
even though I've only had Mac, McKenna, for about three and a half years, I've been learning some of these momming lessons, I guess, for a little bit longer. Because even though Haley's, you know, wasn't my biological daughter, we weren't even married right away in the beginning. She was just, you know, my boyfriend's daughter. Some of these things were coming into play because Mike and I were living together towards the end there. And, you know, we had her. 50% of the time. So some of these things were already really starting to fall into play anyway. Um, But today's episode, make sure to share this with other moms. You know, today's episode is not going to be one that, you know, you need to sit down with your pen and paper and get ready for tons of notes on tips and things like that. It's not going to be hardcore personal development or anything like that. This is going to be one that you can sit down or, you know, if you're folding laundry or whatever you're doing, Your head is going to be nodding along like crazy more than likely because you're going to be like, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, that is exactly what I feel as a mom. Those are the things that I've been feeling or going through or experiencing. This is going to be that type of podcast that you're just nodding and smiling and getting to relate because honestly, those are, you know, I love a good, solid personal development podcast. But I also like those ones sometimes where I'm just like, dude, tell me a little bit more about like what your thoughts are, what your experiences are, so that I can relate to you, so that I can know when you do get into the ones with more tips and content and thickness, that I can trust you, right? And today, as a mom, and majority of my listeners, I know your moms, I want you to be able to sit there and be like, dude, I get it, and she gets me. So with that being said, we're going to jump right in. You just get to sit back, relax, or like I said, fold some laundry because that's mom life, right? And I want to talk about 10 things that I've learned since becoming a mom. You know, 10 of probably a freaking million, you know, since becoming a mom, whether it's, you know, I look at the fact that I am a bio mom or even becoming a bonus mom, like it's been crazy sauce. It is crazy sauce. So no particular order with this list. I just jotted down the thoughts as they're popping into my brain. The first one, ladies, we cannot please everyone. We can't. We cannot please our husbands all the time. We cannot please our children all the time. We sure as fuck can't please all of our family members, right? And we shouldn't have to. We can't please all our friends. We can't please our boss. We can't please our coworkers. There's too many freaking people to have to sit there and worry about making them happy, not pissing them off when we have the responsibility on our shoulders of keeping other human beings alive (laughs) and raising them so they're not a-holes, right? That is our job. And if we're trying our hardest to make that happen, and we piss some people off along the way, I say, so be it. Honestly, if you can sit back, your head hits the pillow at the end of the day, and you think to yourself, dude, my kids are alive. I made sure they weren't too big of a-holes today. I continued to try to force them onto the right path as they charge forward. And you may have ticked somebody else off. It is what it is. And maybe it was one of them that you pissed off, right? If you were doing the right thing, or you were teaching them a lesson, or even you had a I'm a human mom moment, and they got angry, you know, it is what it is. There might even be a moment here and there that you have to go back and be like, dude, sorry that happened. You know, X, Y, Z, and you let it go. Because you're human, so give yourself grace. There's no way you are going to make every single person in your life happy all the time when you are trying to keep humans alive. McKenna, an hour ago, pretty sure she could have been like, Mom, I absolutely despise you. Because homegirl didn't get her ice cream. (laughs) We literally had just had dinner and we're walking around downtown, hanging out, and she knew there was an ice cream shop down there. Well, mom over here was stuffed on nachos. She should have been stuffed on nachos. She just didn't need enough. Dad was full. We just ate dinner. You don't need ice cream, right? The whole world would have thought that I was like murdering my child as we're walking back to the car. But I don't care. Was she pleased with me? Nope, not at all. But you know what? 
I'm hoping she learned a valuable lesson of you don't always get what you want. And at the same time, it didn't kill her, right? So we are not going to please everyone all the time. Number two, for the most part, I'm sorry to say this, right? There's no more being selfish for ourselves. (laughs) Every once in a while, yes, we will have our moments that's like, screw everybody, I'm doing me. Yeah, we're going to have those times, and we should have those times. And make sure you understand when I say being selfish, self-care, keeping yourself healthy, does not count. Eating right, exercising, nope, doesn't count. That's not selfish. That's being smart because you're taking care of yourself for your kids. So don't be like, well, Joni, you said be selfish. No, that doesn't count. Sorry. Health coach coming through here strong on that piece. But meaning there is no more being selfish in the, in the, in the way of, you know, your thoughts, your wishes don't always come first anymore. And at least for me, and maybe other moms would disagree, but at least for me, a lot of times I'm actually pretty much okay with that. There are moments that I'm like, come on, I just want, you know, X, Y, Z, let's make that happen. But like, for example, and this may seem so silly, but I've always been the person like, if I'm sharing a dessert (laughs) with Michael or if I was splitting something, like splitting something with someone or whatever, like I'm always like, dude, I'm going to take the bigger half or I'm going to make sure I get the best last bite. Like, okay, yeah, I'm spoiled in that regard, right? I will go out of my way to make sure McKenna gets the best bite or that she gets the bigger half over myself. It's such a dumb little thing. But like, I've never done that for other people. My child, yeah, I'm willing to not be selfish because I want her to have better. And that's a very small, small thing. But like, even for example, like, you know, I've talked to Haley before about, you know, when it comes to school yeah, it's going to suck. Like, and I'll be transparent. I'm still paying on my own student loans. Am I super excited when she heads off to college or when, you know, schooling or whatever, if she decided, you know, private school or whatever, I told her we will, money won't be really a huge factor. Like if she came and is like, I'm going to Harvard and like, yeah, that might be a discussion, but like money would never be a hold back. So it, the selfish piece can be so minuscule and so small, like letting go of, damn, I don't get the best bite of the chocolate cake last, right? My kid gets that up to the sky's the limit. At least for me, like, I don't want to hold them back. I will take the shitty end of the stick to make sure that they get better. And then on top of it, once in a while, mama selfish And yeah, you two get chicken nuggets and macaroni at home while me and dad get to go out to eat or I get to go get a pedicure or something like that, right? Sometimes we get those things, but majority of the focus is always on the girls. And that's how I think it should be. Number three, and this is hard for me because I'm type A. Ooh, I am super type A, very rigid, very scheduled, very organized, and I have had to with much frustration, really start to come to terms with, I'm never going to be fully prepared ever again. (laughs) There's always going to be a curveball. There's always going to be a, shoot, I did not think about that. Or, dang it, I forgot X, Y, Z at home. And I just am finally like, it, it is what it is. You know, life is moving so fast with four bodies in my house all going different directions and thinking different thoughts. And as a mom of even, you know, maybe you just have one child in the house or, you know, maybe you have seven. Like, (laughs) I mean, I'm sure you agree that, yeah, we are never fully prepared. We do our absolute best and we make do with what we have or what the situation is because things won't be perfect, but we are trying. We're trying to keep these little kids, like I said, alive, these little humans, and make sure that they're not a-holes. 
As long as those two things are happening and we're trying our hardest, that is all that matters. Number four, and oof, this was another hard one for me. Okay, I lie. It points. It points it's hard for me. Function over style. Just look at my Crocs. Just look at my no makeup eyelids all of the time. (laughs) So I was, truth be told, I've always been a person like, I love to kick back in some comfy clothes. And if all of a sudden Mike would be like, oh, let's run to Target. Dude, unless I have like a hole in the ass of my sweatpants, I'm not changing. Like I'm going to Target in my sweatpants and I don't care if they don't have a Nike swoosh on them. Okay. And yes, that's my husband. You know, I only really like to go out in like nice sweatpants. What? Dude, I don't care. Like I can wear these knockoff I got them from Walmart sweatpants. I don't care, right? I'm just going to Target. But I also used to be the person that like, oof, I used to love to be able to dress up and go out. I used to love to sit at my makeup desk and do my makeup for a good solid hour. I mean, I was getting, I was getting fire with like doing a crisp contour, doing some nice, um, cut crease eyeshadow. I could do liner really well. My brow, like I was getting good. And now I praise God (laughs) that the clean girl aesthetic is in style because we are lucky if mama here swooshes on like one coat of like nude brown eyeshadow in the crease of my eyelid. And the only reason I do that is because I kind of have oily skin and sometimes it'll crease there and it'll be like a a crease of like oil and foundation that gets up there. Kind of nasty. So if you put a little eyeshadow, kind of helps blend it out. (laughs) But that's not even every day. I mean, there's more often than not. I've gotten to the point where if like I have a Zoom meeting on like a Monday with someone Either A, I'm off camera, or B, I tell them, hey, yeah, I have no issue doing a Zoom today, but FYI, you get no makeup and a big old messy bun on the top of my head. And as I I run out and run run my errands or whatever, I'm throwing on my Crocs with my sweats. Like, and I'm totally okay with this because, one, I'm comfortable. Two, I know I will get to a point again where I have more time to lean in and make those things happen. Because I still love fashion. I still love makeup. You know, there are days even where Mike will be like, McKenna, stay out of there. Let's let mommy do makeup today. Because he knows I do find joy in that. Because I'm a nerd. But more often than not, it's like a mommy's going to try to get ready, like showered, shaved, lotioned, dressed, hair, makeup in like 40 minutes. Which isn't bad with a shower, you know? So... Function over style, I never really thought that I would fully get there, and I'm pretty sure I'm there. (laughs) Uh, Number five, (sighs) there is no, there's no way to say, like, how much you love your child. Like, there's no love like the love you have for your children. It is insane. I love my husband. I truly do. Like, I never thought, I never knew that there was the type of love that I have with Mike out there. And maybe I'll get into that some point in a podcast in the future. But I mean, for those of you who know, and have followed my podcast, Mike is my second husband. I was married once before in my early, my mid twenties, mid twenties. Mike's my second husband now. And before him, I didn't know what true love was. And I love Haley. I really do. Because I don't think if I didn't love her that I wouldn't get to this point where, like, I could be so unselfish with her. Because transparency, I'm kind of a selfish person. So the fact that I'm very giving and like will sacrifice for her shows me like the love I have for her is just beyond just a random 15 year old. Right. 
And I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe you're a step parent out there and you have your own biological kids and you think this piece is wrong. But it, I mean, there's been a point where we've, I don't remember, we had a conversation one day and he, it came out that Haley was like, well, I know you love McKenna a little different because she's yours. And I looked at her, I was like, you're right, I do. I was like, but I choose to love you. I love you so much and I choose that every day. And I make sure I do because you deserve it. But the love I have for Mac is, oh my word, it's so different. You know, I depth-wise, I do think it's very comparable with Haley. I love them very comparably. But it's like an in-my-blood type of... Because, I mean, we she's mine. I created her. I grew her. And from the moment... And this may be graphic, so I apologize. But from the moment I felt her come into the world... And if you listen to my episode two episodes... One or two. One or two episodes ago you know, my labor story. From the moment I actually felt her come out, I, my body immediately lost it. I was bawling, but like the happiest tears I've ever experienced in my whole life. And seeing her, it, it was unreal. My body literally was Im- immediately, it just like gravitated. It just wanted her like, I, I love her so much because I know God 1000% trusted me to take care of her. He let me grow her. He let me birth her. And now I get to help raise her. So the love that we have as moms for these little human beings, there's nothing that we can say, I think, to really explain the depths. And it has truly been one of the most amazing things. Number six, (sighs) sorry to say this one. I'm kind of going back and forth between like real fun ones, right? And like real honest ones to like those deep sappy ones. But I think that's mom life, right? Ups and downs, roller coaster all the time. But number six, a mom's job is never done. Ever, ever, right? Sitting on the couch, nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. Oh, crap. Mom, I forgot. Da, 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 da. Uh, hey, Jenna, I forgot that at school tomorrow. A, B, C, D, D. And you're just like, what the hell? You could not have told me this four hours ago when I was at the store? Or you could not have asked me to do that today when I was sitting on the couch at three o'clock doing nothing? Right? Like, we've all been there. Or... I was at Target yesterday. You didn't ask me for that yesterday. Why? (laughs) Our job never is done. You know, I think about this with McKenna. Oh my lordy lordy. The moment I clean, I turn around and I'm really type A and I like a clean house. The moment I clean, she is 10 steps behind me, a human tornado. And I shit you not, every time I sweep the floor or vacuum the floor, within 10 minutes, that little bugger asks for popcorn. And she is such a slob with popcorn. (laughs) And I know my job isn't done because even though I just cleaned the floor, in another 10 minutes, I'm going to have to do it again because there are going to be kernels of popcorn everywhere. And yes, I have tried to train her to sweep And yes, we will get there someday. But at three years old, we're just not quite there. (laughs) So the job is never done. And I think it goes so far beyond just like that tangible piece, right? Of the daily grind. You know, I look at my mom. I look at my husband's mom. They're still momming. You know, they're in their 50s. We're in their their 30s. And I guarantee you, you know, when we... When we get to their spot, when we're in our 50s and they're in their 70s, 80s, we're still going to be expecting them to be momming. It never, ever ends. Number seven. Your marriage needs to be number one. Are there times that our marriage is more We're roommates. We are taking care of these 
little humans together and we're just running alongside each other saying hi as we pass by doing different tasks or heading to different jobs or whatever we're doing. Yeah, for sure. But we also are very open with our communication that we need to make sure that we are trying to make each other feel special, that we are dedicating time to one another solo without the girls, that we still make sure we get dates on the regular, that we lean into those things that made us fall in love in the beginning. And we struggle with this at points. Like, no doubt, we struggle with this at points. And we get wrapped up in our shit and that stuff gets shoved to the bottom. And it, honestly, it'll take a couple weeks and all of a sudden we're like, dude, our relationship needs to come back to the forefront. We feel it. And, you know, I've read this in multiple um, different faith books I've read. I've talked about this with different spiritual mentor types of individuals. Your marriage needs to be the rock of your family. That needs to be the core. And I think as well, you know, whether you have boys or girls, I mean, we have girls, but I really want to make sure that we are showing our girls what a solid, healthy, happy, loving relationship is. Especially with, you know, the life that I've lived. That's super important to me. I really want to show that good example. And how I want my girls to love their future husband and how I want to them to make sure that they know what they should, or rather, what they deserve in their marriage. Um, number eight. Another one. So, you know, a few back, I got all sappy and said, you know, the love that we have for our kids is so crazy, so deep. But I think another cool part of that is flip that. The love that they have for us it's so cool. And I get it. I'm spoiled in the aspect of I have a three-year-old. And I think when you have little, little ones, like, yeah, for the most part, their parents are like the coolest people in their lives. Yeah, she has her little friends and whatnot, but like, she loves her mommy. <laughs> I And I'm going to eat that up as much as I can right now. You know, the moment I hear mommy in the morning, I may roll my eyes because I'm in the middle of a task, but every day I stop that task and I go to her because I'm going to eat this love up as much as I can right now because I know she probably, especially, I mean, she's my kid. She has an attitude. Like, I know she will get to a point where I'm not the coolest person in her life and she's not going to be head over heels, you know, in mommy-daughter love with me. So I really want to make sure that I'm living in that present moment with that. But I also know even, you know, even when we aren't feeling the love from our kids as much as we wish that we were, it's there. You know, end of the day, I think when you sit back and you think like, but who are they relying on? Who are they calling? Who do they run to? And that's the biggest piece. It is so cool to know like, This kid here that calls me mom loves me so much. All right. Sappiness over for a moment. Number nine. I think as moms, we just have to say we've lost this battle. Our energy will never compare to our children. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. At least if you have a child like my little one. Because that girl, whoo we, she literally is go from the moment she wakes up until the moment those eyes close. Even at nappish slash rest time, I mean, when it is existent, because more often than not, it's non-existent. But when, even when she does take a nap, it's usually because she is like gone until she's dropped. Like, she will not give up. She just wants to keep going, keep going, keep going. Because her energy tank is so full. And that's a lot of children. You always hear people joke, oh, don't you wish you had their energy? I mean, to a point. But, like, holy cow. I think we just need to be like, you know what? Let them have it. It's their turn in life to be like this. And that's okay. And I'm okay 
needing a couple cups of coffee and still looking at them and being like, wow, you are crazy. <laughs> All right. And I'm not, I'm just going to be transparent and put it out there. I mean, Mac can get, she can get to a point where literally, I mean, I'm not the most PC parent by any means. I'm far from. And my husband and I look at her and I'm like, well, she must have found a crack stash again because this is insane. It is so wild. Like I have never seen. And I was a nanny for multiple years for multiple families. I watched my mom do an in-home daycare for almost 20 years. The energy my child has, like I have maybe seen in like five other kids my whole life. So it, it's awesome. It truly is. Like I know this kid is going to be amazing. She's going to accomplish really great things. Or so I pray. <laughs> I hope she puts it to good use. But the energy is, it, it's, the water runs deep. Let's just say that. And I will never come close to those depths myself. So until then, right? Until her is either like it lessens a little bit or until I just get to the point where I'm like, I don't even need to try to match, right? I'm just going to keep drinking my caffeine and watching her and smiling. All right. Number 10. Ooh. All right. Oh, we got back to a sappy-ish one again. We're wrapping on the sappy one. But I think as a mom, one of the best lessons that I've been able to take away is that I have way more purpose to try to be the best Jenna that I can be. And yes, that includes like taking care of my health, working out, eating right. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> but for me, my podcast is called Ramblings of an Addict. I will not touch booze ever again because I never want my girls to have to watch a Jenna, a mom, that they don't deserve. Ever. I think... As a mom, it gives you so much extra oomph to be like, I will never be like that because my kids deserve better. And let me add this caveat. There are moms, there are parents out there that still struggle with addiction. I don't, there's part of me, yes, that I'm like, wow, why can't, why can't they, you know, see but at the same time, I also know that an addiction is such a real struggle that I can totally empathize. And you just pray for that individual that I hope they get to a point that they see what they're missing out on or what they could be and they get the help they need to lean into that. But I can tell you now that I'm on this side of it, and I thank God for that every day, the purpose that we have to fight through any obstacle we may come across to know that, yeah, that might be hard to have to do, but I don't care because I want my kids to see me at my best and I want to be able to be my best for them. All right. With that, now that I've given you some, some tan, like some real ones, some pieces that, yep, yeah, that's mom life, thousand percent. But also, of course, you know, it wouldn't be Mother's Day without a little bit of the sappiness. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for joining me today to celebrate being a mom. To celebrate bringing little humans into this world, keeping them alive, and praying and hoping that we are not turning them into little a-holes. But as you really reflect on that, I want you to remember that, you know, whether it's we get to remember that we are so incredibly loved by these little people, or maybe remembering that being a mom is a journey so full of freaking learning and growth opportunities. Today, I just really wanted you to be able to kick back, relax, 
enjoy just some good old get to know you, have some fun type of content, relate with another mom. But the biggest thing I want you to remember is being a mom, yeah, it's a never ending job. But by focusing on what matters most, those little people, or maybe they're big people now, and being our best selves for them, we do have the opportunity to create a better world for our kids, which is our goal as moms. So I want to wish you incredibly happy Mother's Day. And I want to say out loud, right? Praying for each other, praying that we can be our best selves as mothers, be the best moms that our children deserve, and being the best mom that we deserve for ourselves. Happy Mother's Day, and I hope you find that peace-filled moment this week, even if it didn't happen exactly on Sunday, Mother's Day. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Ramblings of an Addict with Jenna Dix. Remember, if you are battling an addiction, reach out for help and support. There are many resources available to assist in your journey towards recovery. Surround yourself with a supportive community and never give up on the path towards a healthier and happier life. I appreciate you taking the time to listen and joining me on this journey. As you heard, I'm always rambling. But seriously, thank you for your support and make sure to subscribe and follow my channel. I can't wait to share more with you on the next episode. Until then, keep on rambling. found this podcast helpful and want to dive deeper into personal growth and self-improvement, be sure to head over to my website, jennadix.com. You'll find a wealth of resources there. There is a little less drug, sex, and rock and roll these days, but whether you're interested in getting healthy, information on momming or parenting, or politics, jennadix.com has something for everyone. So what are you waiting for? Head to jennadix.com today and start your journey towards personal growth and self-awareness. See you there.